cursed. Oh wait, it's not October anymore. Cursed. Yeah, the word cursed seems somewhat overused these days. In the same way that the words lol and cringe have lost all meaning. That's cringe. You're cringe! The word cursed is also losing slowly its meaning. I mean, just look at this. Cursed movie tanks. Cursed German aircraft projects. Cursed Japanese Sherman hunter. Cursed Israeli tanks. Cursed World War II images. Cursed World War II ships. Cursed World War II memes. And I can just go on and on. But I really cannot think of any other way to describe the Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov. When I started to look into the ship, I already knew that this was going to be a good story. But I had no idea how bad things really were. And if you already know how cursed the Admiral Kuznetsov is, I can guarantee you it's much, much worse than you think. So let's take a look at the most cursed ship in the Russian Navy. The Admiral Kuznetsov is a Kuznetsov class aircraft carrier cruiser. This classification is basically saying that it's a ship that can launch airplanes, but it can also launch cruise missiles. It was designed in 1979 by the Soviet Union, with construction starting in April 1st, 1982 in Chernomersky shipyard. The ship was around 70% complete in 1989, and in November 1989 it undertook its first aircraft operations. Now, the ship was still missing a few bits and pieces until it could go into the real world, but progress on construction of the ship was going along quite good. It would need a few final touches before it could serve in the Soviet Navy in 1991. Okay, so this ship never served a day in the Soviet fleet, but that's where the problems started for the ship. The Admiral Kuznetsov and his sister ship the Vyayak were both being constructed in a shipyard in Ukraine. Now, Ukraine got the Freedom DLC a few months earlier than Russia, and Ukraine wanted to keep these two ships for themselves. The only problem was that at that moment the Admiral Kuznetsov was out on the sea. So the Ukrainian president sent a telegram to the ship's commander, basically asking if they could please return Ukrainian property. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, this was ignored, Serious? and in December 1991, the Kuznetsov set sail from the Black Sea to join the Northern Fleet. A single decision that will cost the Russian taxpayer in hindsight a lot of money. So now the new Russian state has a brand new aircraft carrier. Now, the only problem being, it is the 90s. And the 90s for the Russian economy is, to say it lightly, absolutely f***ing horrible. And aircraft carriers are extremely expensive, expensive to maintain and expensive to operate. So even though Russia did get this brand new aircraft carrier, it was basically sitting in bubble wrap for the next four years, collecting dust and more importantly, rust. But that would all change on the 23rd of December 1995, when Kuznetsov was going to be deployed for the very first time. The Admiral Kuznetsov was now the flagship of the Russian Navy, and now it was going to help Russia project power onto the Mediterranean for 90 whole days. This was to mark the 300th anniversary of the establishment of the Russian Navy. This was going to be a very important deployment for Russia. It was not only going to display power, it was also going to show that Russia was still a serious player, and it would also maybe help with potential weapon sales to potential buyers. But for that to happen, everything had to go perfect. So what happened? The water evaporator broke down almost immediately, making the ship run out of fresh water at the very start of the deployment. Making the ship anchored in the port of Tartarus in Syria for the majority of its deployment. So after that uh, display of power, the ship was basically doing nothing and was sitting around in the North Sea Fleet shipyard till 1997. The ship needed some repairs and the Russian government didn't have the clamps to do that at that moment. So it was just sitting there, gathering dust and again, gathering rust. However, the Russian government did manage to save up some money in their piggy bank to get the ship the overhaul that it needed. And in November 1998, it was back in action. But this would definitely not be the last time that the Admiral Kuznetsov needed some expensive repairs. The next two years for the Admiral Kuznetsov were pretty good with absolutely no problems with the ship. Mainly because the ship remained in port. But hey, get the wins when you can get them, right? They did have an other Mediterranean deployment scheduled for the winter of 2000 till 2001, but uh, luckily for everyone involved, that was cancelled. It did do some smaller things, but everything was going pretty good for the ship. Well, it's uh, not completely true. During one of the smaller exercises, it did lose one of the SU-33s when it accidentally fell off the carrier into the Atlantic Ocean. But I mean, you can hardly blame the Kuznetsov for that. She's been such a good ship. Yeah, who's a good ship? Who's a good little aircraft carrier? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. It wouldn't be until December 2007 that the Admiral Kuznetsov would be deployed again for the first time in 10 years. However, this good luck streak was about to end. Because in 2008, the Kuznetsov was deployed again to the Mediterranean, and during this deployment, a small fire broke out due to faulty wiring, killing one of the crew members. 
At this point there were reports coming out that the ship not only had problems with the electricity, but also with the plumbing. With some people complaining that there was only 10 minutes of fresh water in the morning and 10 minutes of fresh water in the night, and that only half of the toilets were working on board. There was also a chronic lag of air conditioning and heating on board. So this was definitely not a carnival cruise line for the sailors. Well, I mean, in some sense it's kind of similar. In the same deployment, the Kutznesov also had an oil spill. Around 300 tons of oil were spilled on the south coast of Ireland. The Russian Navy did accept responsibility for this, saying that it happened during the refueling of the ship, but they did decide to not inform anyone about it. Now, I have no idea how a simple refueling can go so bad, but just to give you some context of how much oil we are talking about, 300 tons of oil is enough to fill up four, maybe even five Ford Rangers. After that display of nature conservation, the ship went back in the dry docks in 2009 for repairs and upgrades, hopefully addressing the horrible state that the ship was in. Now, if you have seen the video of Laserpick, are there any 334s in Ukraine, or if you have seen any other videos or articles talking about the state of the Russian army, navy, air force, police, school system, or let's face it, any other part of Russian society, you know that corruption is not just tolerated, it is expected. And like Confucius once said, a foolish man completes the upgrade package of the aircraft carrier, while a wise man pockets the taxpayer money. During the next deployment in February 2012, the Kutsnetsov had to be dragged back by a tugboat after having lost propulsion during the return voyage. To make things even more embarrassing, this problem with the engine couldn't be solved, so now whenever the Kutsnetsov went to do something, it would be accompanied by this tugboat. <laughs> At this point the engines were around as unreliable as having the Italians as your allies in a major conflict. In November 2016, the Kuznetsov participated in its first and only combat mission. The ship launched SU-33s to strike against positions on the Islamic State in Syria. And all things considered, this went all pretty good. Sure, the tugboat had to come along to accompany the ship, and one MiG-29K may have fallen off the deck, Another one. and an SU-33 may have crashed into the sea, costing Russia between 33 and 45 million dollars, oh. but hey, they carried out 420 combat missions, hitting around 1,252 targets, so that's not that bad. It was also decided around this time that the Admiral Kuznetsov was going to get an other upgrade and modernization program in the first quarter of 2017, expanding the life by another 25 years, giving the people at the shipyard yet another chance to fill up their pockets and do fuck all. And in 2018 it went into the dry docks, and here's a little spoiler, it's still there 6 years later. This is also the point in the story where the bad luck with the ship goes from funny to just being silly. On the 30th of October 2018, the ship was damaged when the floating dry dock sank. Hello, how are you? I am under the water. Please help me. Causing one of the cranes to fall down onto the ship's flight deck, leaving an 18 square meter hole. Four Gopniks were injured during this and one fell into the ICC. The cost of repairing the damages was estimated to be $1 million. They also needed to build a brand new dry dock to hold the Admiral Kutsnetsov, which I imagined wasn't cheap neither. However, the head of the shipbuilding corporation was still convinced that they would be able to hand back the ship to the Navy in 2020. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's just not gonna happen. In 2019, a major fire broke out on the ship while people were working on it. This fire cost the life of two people, with a dozen more injured. This also added an estimated $8 million of damages to the ship. In November 2021, it was reported that bad weather caused significant delays in the repairs of the ship, which meant that it would take at least one more year to finish the ship that was initially planned to be finished in 2020. And after being way over budget and way over time for all these upgrades, in 2020 it seemed like the ship was finally gonna be done. But on December 22nd of that year, when the ship was preparing to leave the dry docks, another fire occurred. This fire was extinguished quite fast and nobody got hurt, but the Kuznetsov was again damaged, delaying the delivery even more. For now, it's planned that the Admiral Kuznetsov will be handed over to the Russian Navy in the first quarter of 2024. However, as of time of recording, that is still a few months away and with the bad luck of this ship, anything can still happen. So after hearing all of that, you might say, well, it's just a badly designed ship, it's a Soviet ship. This was bound to happen. And I would say yes, because the building standards of the Soviets was uh, just not the highest. But with proper maintenance, the ship would have performed fine. And we know this because the Admiral Kuznetsov had a sister ship called the Veryak. The ship is now called the Liang, and it's owned by the Chinese. And if you want proof that the Admiral Kuznetsov could have worked with proper maintenance, then look no further than this ship right here. In 1998, this ship was sold on auction for only 20 million dollars. 
Now you might say 20 million dollars, that is quite cheap for an aircraft carrier. And that was because the ship was rusting away since 1991. When the Ukrainians got the ship back in 1991, they didn't do anything with it. They didn't finish it, they didn't maintain it, it was just sitting there. It was sold to a Chinese company, the Changlot company, that had plans to make a hotel slash casino in there. Western observers seemed a little bit suspicious about the deal, because Changlot didn't have a phone number and it was not located at the listed address. However, like I said before, the ship was completely destroyed and rusted away, so nobody believed that you could make an operational warship out of this. Well, guess what? Here's the ship right now, and the Chinese are still using it till this day without a single problem. So no, the Admiral Kuznetsov is not cursed, it's just badly maintained. However, if you really want to believe that the Admiral Kuznetsov is cursed, there is one explanation why it is cursed. Sailors are very superstitious people, and legend says when you christen a ship, the name goes into a ledger of the deep, maintained by Neptune himself. Renaming the ship means that you are trying to slip something by the gods, and the gods will punish you for your deviousness. I've been calling this ship the Admiral Kuznetsov throughout the whole video, but that was not the first name. That would be the Ria, then renamed to the Leonard Brezhnev, and then again renamed to the Lisi, and then again renamed to the final name that we know today, the Admiral Kuznetsov. The Russians tried to slip something past the gods, not once, not twice, but three whole times, cursing this ship forever. 